Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of these smaller tournaments that happened this weekend alongside Rise and Grind. There's going to be two B tiers that we're going to be covering, which are Smash Legends 4 and Claro Gaming 2023. And there's a bunch of C tiers that happened this weekend and I won't be talking about all of them, but I will be talking about Big Cheese 4 just because I like to highlight the Australian scene whenever I can. But you also had Armadillo winning Smash North America. You had Zombo winning Failsafe Fall 2023. You had Solo winning Smashing Future 2 with Rosalina. You had Nao winning Uprising 2023, and finally Yotoro Guri winning Aikisuma 1. So let's kick it off with the smallest of the three events, which is going to be Big Cheese 4 coming in at a C tier. And for our top eight, you're going to have Luma and Malakoff in seventh, Taicho and Zav in fifth, Heaven in fourth, Extra in third, Bro 1 in second, and you had Strix winning the entire thing. Now, this tournament was not your typical tournament, at least in the pools phase, because they had a Gauntlet S style of pool. One player is going to be eliminated, one player gets moved to round two, and then the second and third place just have to play someone in round one. So because of this, you did have a couple weird scenarios in the seating the biggest one was going to be strix versus ghost and there were only two players that received to make top eight this event that ended up not making top eight and they both lost the same player in the loser side so we'll get to that when it happens but you're going to have ghost losing to strix in the winner side going game five the only time this tournament that strix ended up going game five and you're going to have dd falling to heaven in the winner side and again i'll talk about the losers eliminations when we actually get to that player Enemy free block here. The pools actually had five players in them, but it works the same way. You're going to have the bottom two being eliminated. Second and third place are going to move on to round one, and first place is going to get a bye to round two. And the reason that Ghost and Strix had to fight so early on was because Goon actually was able to beat Ghost 2-0. So shouts to him for that really big upset. And we are going to be pretty much only doing top eights for today's video just because I'm not as familiar with these scenes. But if there's a crazy run that didn't get to the top eight, please leave a comment down below so I and other people can know about it. And while you're down there, be sure to sub. But the top eight for this tournament, for seventh place, you're going to have Luma and Malakoff starting off with Luma. Now, she plays Polythena for anyone that doesn't know. And Polythena is a character that's had a little bit of a renaissance in themselves. Like, you look after the quarantine area, you're going to have Luis and Chag just farming every single event. Then they had a little bit of a fall off there and there was kind of a lull period where Paulo wasn't doing super well maybe Incineroar is a little bit better and now all of a sudden you have Jagaimo you have Chase you still have Luis and Chag doing incredibly well Luma now getting her first top eight at a C tier event I believe post quarantine with wins on Genova 404 Piggins Newt and Reds only losing to Extra and Taicho two players that she has beaten in the past but she's also lost to in the past she's gonna have a 2-2 record versus Taicho and a 1-3 record versus Extra she also brought out the Mii Brawler versus Taicho which I personally was very pleased with i'm always happy to see me brawler especially on the top stage i think that character is extremely underrated it's just because no one is really playing them so shouts to luma for giving that character representation because brawler is broken and finishing seventh place alongside her is going to be Malakoff with wins on Ignis, Wootkins, Newt, Moonlight, and Beat all in the loser side. He was able to win five sets in a row after losing a bro one in a game five fashion. And then once in the top eight, he does lose game four to Zap. And Luigi was the main character he was playing this tournament, but he did try the Me Gunner and Wolf versus Zap in the top eight. And also, shout out to Ravsar for this fact and just a lot of facts about this video in general because he gave me a ton ton of notes about the AUC that I just straight up did not know about so his link will be down below makes some really good content but off topic he said that Malakoff was playing pretty much all random for the last season so a lot of his characters are just going to be more fleshed out and he has deeper pockets and if you want to get better at Smash Ultimate that is how I recommend it because not only are you learning the ins and outs of every single character, you're not thinking through the lens of one character. You look at Zero Suit players, for example, they have a really bad habit of Dalby because they're just used to having a get out of jail free card, makes them super readable. But if you take away that Dalby, their neutral becomes a lot worse. So if you learn to play a character without their get out of jail free cards or the correct option picks every single time, you're just going to be a lot better at Smash Ultimate as well as a lot more aware of what your opponent can do to you. So highly recommend that you do that. In fifth place, you're going to have Taicho and Zap starting off with Taicho. He was able to pick up wins on Wootkins, William, Macarp, Khan Gaming, and Luma, only losing to Bro 1 twice. The first set was going to go to game 5, and the second one was going to be a 3 on Now, Taicho, one of the two players that was not seen to get top 8 that actually ended up getting into the top 8 of this tournament, so huge ups to him for that. And another Greninja player having success. You're going to have Terra getting 5th place at Rising Grind. Taicho also getting 5th place here. Is Greninja a good character maybe making a comeback? Honestly, I don't know. He's a character with some very 
glaring issues, but also there's a lot of top tiers with some pretty big issues in this game. You look at Aegis and Cloud, those characters' recoveries are trash, but you still have people being incredibly consistent with them. So Greninja is a character that I do believe you can take the top, but we're going to have to wait until players like Taicho, like Tarek, actually start doing it. And to be fair, this is an amazing start. But the run of the tournament is easily, in my opinion, Zav. He was able to win six sets in a row in the loser side after losing very early on to P9. He also got upset by John Bombo in the group stage rather than the gauntlet stage. So shout out to John Bombo for that one. Also just a fire name. But this loser run so good. He was able to beat Chef. Ghost, Didi, Genova 404, Finn, and Malakoff. And for anyone that doesn't know who Didi and Ghost were, Didi was the first seed of this tournament, and Ghost was the third seed of this tournament. And prior to this, Zaf had a pretty decent record versus Didi. He was 8-9 overall, and he's won their last four encounters, so you would expect him to take that one. But prior to this, he had never beaten Ghost, and it was an 0-8 record. Now, I'm sure a lot of these sets are extremely old, but still, massive thing for Zap to overcome in this tournament, especially on the big stage. Like, this is going to be Australia's not biggest tournament of the year, but it's definitely up there because they don't have too many massive events. So, to do it when it matters most has got to feel super good for Zap. So, just massive shouts to him for the run. Editing for Pluck here. I don't know if I already said this, but I couldn't find it in the video. Zap is going to be playing Peach, and then he has a Min Min secondary as well. In fourth place, you're going to have Heaven, third place, Extra. Now, in terms of SPR, Heaven's run was probably the most impressive one of the tournament, at least out of all the runs that ended up getting into the top eight. He had an SPR of plus four as the 16th seed and was able to pick up wins on Stacked, Mast, DD, Con Gaming, and Zab. The DD win's obviously going to be the most impressive run. And prior to this, he had a 1-3 record versus DD, so he definitely wasn't favored to win this one, but managed to overcome when it mattered most. And I also just got to give him huge props for not only getting a massive upset over DD, but continuing the run after that. I feel like a a lot of the time when you see players make a big upset they just immediately bomb up whether it's because they can't handle the pressure or they're just not good enough to be that far in the bracket but heaven was neither of those he performed excellently after his big win over dd and had a really solid run at this tournament so massive props for that and in third place, you're going to have Extra. He was able to pick up wins on Moonlight, Rambo, John Bombo, Luma, and Heaven, only losing to Srix and Bro one And this is nothing crazy from Extra. I mean, he's the fourth seed, so technically it's an overperformance, but I expect these kind of placements from a player of his caliber. He is incredible and has been at the top of the Australian seeds for quite some time. Now, for anyone that's wondering who he plays, he's going to be playing mainly Game Watch. The Wolf did come out a little bit this tournament. And then also, I don't know if I mentioned it, but you're going to have Heaven playing Ryu and Ken, mainly Ken from what I saw, and you're going to have Zav on the Peach. I'm pretty sure I mentioned everyone else, but again, if I didn't leave a comment down below. Off topic though, extra amazing player. We're only seeing more and more Game Watch propaganda being pushed. This character is so ridiculously good. His advantage stays the best in the game. He has the best out of shield in the game. His disadvantage is incredible. He really doesn't have a ton of flaws besides his weight being the only one that I can think of off the top of my head. So big ups to extra for the run and just showcasing how good Game Watch is. In second place, you're going to have Bro 1 and winning the entire thing with Srix. And I got to praise Bro 1's mental at this tournament because he lost two matches in the pools to both McCarp and Jamie, but he did not let that affect him at all going into the main bracket where he was able to beat Fen. And then the next three sets are all game five in Malakoff, Taicho, and Finn. Once in the top eight, he loses to Srix in game four, gets the run back versus Taicho. I mean, I guess he won the first set, but this time it was 3 0, as well as beating Heaven and Extra before losing to Srix once again. But to be able to bounce back from that is super important. Impressive, and I know that Bro One plays a multitude of characters, but from what I saw, the tournament Wolf was doing like 99% of the work. So, shout out to another Wolf player getting some really good results. Our big winner is gonna be Srix. Managed to take this tournament without dropping a set, beating Ghost in the game five, as well as P9 beat. Bro 1 extra and Bro 1 once again. And Strix is one of the best players in Australia. He has been for a little bit now, as well as the Australian player with the highest peak. I think out of any of them, as he was able to beat Mia at Cog Ruby 9. Like, there's been a couple other really nice upsets from Australian players. Kanaji beating Pro Bonham comes to mind, but beating Mia, a top three player in the world, even if the matchup is bad, is super impressive. He's also the only Australian player to win two C tiers this year. Shout out to Rapsat for that fact, because he was also able to pick up a win at the action, as well as this event right here. And I do believe that if Strix was consistently traveling, he would be a top 50 player in the world. We haven't seen him go to a ton of international events, but whenever he has, he's always looked fairly impressive. And Sephiroth is a character that I have pretty much zero faith in, but Strix makes this character look actually pretty good. So really, really hope I get to see more of him, especially outside of Australia, because I just want to see him facing new talent. And I think he can pull off a couple serious upsets. On to our next event, which is going to be Claro Gaming 2023. For the top eight, you're going to have Mandy and Toguro in seventh. 
Walmart and Yorbro in fifth, DC in fourth, Shaka in third, Capitan Sito in second, and winning the entire thing with Sonics. And we have three top eight seeds that ended up not making it into the top eight. You're gonna have Naranja, who ends up losing to Ahmed and Toguro, and Ahmed over Naranja might have been the biggest upset of the tournament, at least in terms of SPR. You're gonna have Chaz losing to Mandy and Yorbro, two players that ended up getting into the top eight, so not the end of the world. And finally, you're gonna have Kodo, who ends up losing to DC and Happy. In seventh place, you're going to have Mandy and Toguro, and I want to preface this by saying I know very little about the Dominican Republic scene. Pretty much everything I know about the scene was because I was doing research for this video, so it's not going to be as in-depth, but I still do want to highlight these players because they're all extremely talented, and Toguro, he was able to pick up wins on Maeve Troy, Naranja, and Garbell. Shout out to Garbell for not only placing ninth in this event, but also getting a really big win over Omar, but back on topic, Toguro, he was using a majority Mario, though he did have a Luigi secondary that came out from time to time, which is a very interesting character combination because there's kind of two routes you can go when you have a secondary you can either play a character that's an opposite archetype or you can play a character that is the exact same archetype and i would definitely say that mario and luigi are similar archetypes but they have different temples mario is just a more of a fast based character just because he's a quicker character in general as well as his grab not being as slow as luigi's grab so if you're playing these characters at different paces which can definitely catch your opponent off guard but you're also going to probably struggle in the same matchup so it's a really interesting choice and it did work out for Tagoro here i mean he was able to make top eight of the event so clearly something is working about that combination even if it is just the mario and then our other seventh place finisher of mandy is able to get wins on Chaz and sabib oh one at least i think that's how you say that and mandy is going to be playing fox now, fox is also a character that's been in the limelight as of late because light he's the only fox player all of a sudden he's not the only fox player and he actually hasn't been the only fox player for a long time but people haven't been able to reach his height and i do believe that fox is a late game character so it makes sense that people are just starting to get good results with fox that aren't named light and mandy it's not like he's been an unknown player in dominican republic but dr isn't a reason that has a ton of big events so it was really nice for him to be able to showcase himself by getting top eight this one also, I just forgot to mention this, but Mandy was the 13th seed of this event, so he was one of the players that wasn't seen to get top eight that managed to do so. In fifth place, you're gonna have your bro and Omar. Your bro was the 11th seed of the event, so another player that was not seen to get top eight that ended up doing so. He was able to pick up wins on Emmet, Chaz, and Toguro, only losing to Shaka and DC. And your bro, at least to my knowledge, played solo Kazuya at this event. And solo Kazuya is not something that is super common nowadays. You look at the top three Kazuya players in the world, it's gonna be Riddles, who has the Terry. T, who has the Pac-Man, and Tarek, who has the Greninja. And Tarek doesn't even really play Kazuya anymore, so maybe he shouldn't be on the list, but you get my point. It is not a character that you can solo main in the current meta just because people are really strong in the counterplay. Like, Kazuya is a character that, in my opinion, has already plateaued. Can you zero death off electric? Great. That's all that you are going to be learning with this character. There's not a ton more that you could advance the meta with, but the counterplay versus Kazuya is going to continually get better. And I'm sure there'll be one or two more Kazuya combos that are actually pretty important that get developed, but you get my general point. I think people are getting better better at playing against Kazuya. So when someone is able to make a run like your bro did here, it makes it that much more impressive for me. And then his counterpart, Omar, who ends up getting fifth place, he was the seventh seed of this event. So nothing crazy, even though it is an overperformance, he was able to pick up wins on Rykar, Suri, sharpie and mandy only losing to garbell and shaka and he's a snake player i love watching snake there's not a ton of analysis to go into there but just another snake player getting really good results you got dc in fourth and third place is shaka now dc was the 12th seed of this event so i think in terms of sbr this is the most impressive run he was able to pick up wins on sir e kodo mandy and your bro only dropping sets to sonics and shaka and dc plays rob for anyone wondering and rob is a really interesting character because one of the most represented characters in this game really broken i think in my opinion kind of undisputed top 10 but you don't often see Raw players getting into the top 8 unless their name is Zomba. Now I know that Anathema top 8 arrived around this past weekend, but for how popular this character is, it's not often that you see them going super far in a tournament. So massive props to DC for being able to make this run so deep. And Shaka as well ends up getting third place. He's the third seed, so nothing super crazy there, but he's able to pick up wins on your bro, Omart, and DC only losing to the second and first place finishers respectively. And he plays Joker, so you know that gameplay was nasty. He also brought out the Mewtwo versus Sonic in game two and three and even though it didn't end up working out it's a very interesting counterpick Mewtwo's not a character that we get to see all the time so it's always nice to see him at the top level and in her plot here, just thought I should mention the raw point is relative to how many raw players there are. Like, there's still a handful of raw players that are top aiding these pretty big events, but when you look at how many insane robs that there are, it's actually not that many. 
And our grand finalists are going to be the top two seeds, exactly who you expect in the order you expect. Capitan Sito in second and Sonics in first. Capitan Sito still picking up wins on Senshi, Garbell, and Shaka. And Sonics picking up wins on Punisher, Sabi, Sharpie, DC, and Shaka. But when it comes to Sonics versus Capitan Sito itself, you're going to have Capitan Sito actually taking the first set, game four. And then the last two sets, Sonics is going to win both of them, both those sets going to game five and this is just an example of players knowing each other extremely well sonics and copy don Tito have so many reps versus each other they've been the top two of dr for what seems like a little bit now and because of this they just know the ins and outs of their character and more specifically the ins and outs of the player the habits and those make the most entertaining sense i highly recommend that you watch the grand finals of this tournament because it was an absolute banger we got to see sonics pop off which never happens that's how you know this was a super important win for him and i mean Beating your boys in the Grand Finals is more important than beating the best player in the world in the Grand Finals. Also, I just forgot to mention this, but the production at this event was insane. And our final event is going to be Smash Legends 4 for the top 8. You're going to have Luis Fur and Ed in 7th, MVD and Rox in 5th, SkyJ in 4th, Alan Dis in 3rd, Waka in 2nd, and winning the entire thing was Spargo, and we get two top eight seats not getting into the top eight, which are going to be Chag, losing to Luis for an MVD, and Wolfen losing to Sky J and Ed, and also, shout out to Wolfen because his banjo actually cooks. In seventh place, you're going to have Luis for and Ed. These are both of our players that actually were not supposed to be in this top eight. You're going to have Luis for as the 12th seed and Ed as the 11th seed. Luis for was able to pick up wins on Axel.exe, Chag, and Robot 3050 or 3050. I'm not actually super sure how you pronounce that, but he plays Snake, so shouts in for that. You're going to have Waka, who plays Luigi, which is a very bad matchup for Fox, and MVD being the only players that were able to beat Luis for this event. And the Chag win is especially impressive. Yet another Fox player coming into the room, getting a result that isn't named Light. Fox is just a late game character and now that we're in the late game you're starting to see him get some pretty good results and as well on the game watch that's a character that's been on the forefront of a lot of conversation as late because just a really good character was able to pick up wins on blaze shadow and wolfen getting double eliminated by rock so kind of unlucky there and then i also should add that he was able to beat ed with two d's in this event so ed diff best ed in the world in fifth place, you're going to have Rox and MVD. MVD is able to pick up wins on Hattrick, Romeo Santos, Chag, and Luis Ferd. I believe he's the only invader of the event, at least from America, and he did pretty well, overperformed his eighth seed. And MVD is just an extremely underrated player, and I kind of get why he's playing Snake. There's a million good Snake players to talk about, and he also just doesn't go to a ton of events, but MVD is still one of the best Snakes in this game. His Nikita usage is still the best in the world, kind of significantly in my opinion, and I've seen what Hurt can do with that move, so that's a pretty big statement for me. And MVD is overall an incredible player that I just really want to see more of, because he's real good, and I like watching Snake. And speaking of characters that I like watching, Rocks or other fifth place finishers gonna pick up wins on Ed, MT Cat, and Ed again, as well as Kira. I just forgot to mention that one, but one of the best Sheik players in the world. And Sheik is also a late game character, so it makes sense that we're starting to see her results kind of on an upswing right now. You're gonna have I'm doing really well, WebJP's doing really well, Mr. R isn't doing as good in 2023, but he has been getting results. And Rocks, a player that we don't get to see travel too much. We saw him at Gommel where he had a really nice performance, and at this event, he just looked very, very strong. One of the best Sheik players in the world was able to take Alanis and Walker, the two players that lost to to game five and is overall just cracked at the game in fourth place you got sky j third place alan this now technically this is an underperformance from sky j he was the second seed but also it's still top four to b tier so who cares he was able to pick up wins on sapphire dkm wolfen and mvd only dropping sets to alan this and waka and every single opponent that he beat aside from cosmic v so shouts to cosmic v he three yo he dominated people and that does make sense incinor is a very steamrolly character and also we're not even going to talk about how crazy it is that sky j has done the impossible once again with incinor like this character isn't bad, but the consistency with SkyJ is not normal. It is absolutely unreal what he's able to do over and over again. And I said I wasn't going to talk about it. I started talking about it. It's just it's a really, really impressive. So shout out to SkyJ. Third place is going to be Alanis. He was in the third seed, so technically nothing crazy here, but he was able to pick up wins on Green Sito, Soto, Rox, and SkyJ, only losing to second place and first place, respectively. And one of my favorite Snake players to watch, one of the best players in Mexico that does not get enough credit because he just doesn't really go to enough events. And when he starts going to events, he's going to be far enough. And our grand finalists are Waka in second and Spargo in first. Waka picking up wins on Taco Bros, Vanitas, Luis for Rox, SkyJ, and Alan Dis, only losing to Spargo twice. And he was also the only player at this tournament that was able to take a game off Spargo in the winter semifinals. So 
big upstim for that. I think Waka is in contention for the best Luigi in the world, but it's just kind of tough to tell it because he doesn't go to a ton of events. And Mexico itself just doesn't have a ton of events to gauge from, but whenever we do see him performing, he looks incredibly impressive, and he's got some really solid placements under his belt. So I think if we could see Waka traveling a little bit more, he could be the best Luigi player in the world. I think he has the talent for it, just not the results quite yet. So we'll have to see how that does unfold. And then Spargo, he won the event. Not really a shocker to literally anyone. Only dropped a single game to Waka, beating Yuka, MVD, Waka twice, and Alan Dis. He's the second best player in the world, maybe third best player in the world. Ooh, but that's a discussion for another time. So him winning this event is not a surprise at all. Also, he 3 owed Waka in the grand finals using Byleth just for that extra flex. And we did see Lucina come out this tournament from Spargo, which I was very interested by. Now, that Lucina came out in the only game he lost the entire tournament, so we're not going to talk about that. But I just think it's interesting that he's trialing the character and... I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff I left out in this video because we covered three tournaments and stayed pretty much just in the top eight. So if there's anything I left out, got wrong, or if you just want to say hi, leave a comment down below. Be sure to sub while you're down there. The support has been absolutely unrealizable. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.